Hello, welcome to this video where we look at calculating the line integral from the vector field perspective. And so we're going to uh, calculate the line integral um, in multiple ways. And, uh, we're going to use multiple curves uh, and calculate the line integral of the vector field dotted with the dr, the derivative of the curve, the path curve, the path. All right, so there we go. First up, our curve is going to be going from the origin to 5 on the x-axis, and then going from that point up to 5, 5, vertically upward. And the vector field is y for the i component and x for the j component. Uh, but here's a video of the traversing of the path. It's in two different parts. There's a horizontal part and a vertical part. So um, the function is y, x, the vector field. So at every point, there's a vector who is uh, y, x, pointing um, y for i and x for j. And um, this, this vector field is going to be working to move the particle along the curve. Remember from our previous visuals that if it's ever going to be um, that the vector field arrows are orthogonal to the curve, then what that's going to cause the, the line integral to be is zero. We can see that happening all along C1. All right, but we'll verify by actually calculating it. All right. Okay, great. So C1 is the path from 0, 0 to 5, 0. And then C2 is the path from 5, 0 to 5, 5. We'll have them color coded. We'll have one slide for each. The actual full curve is the union of those two curves. Okay, so let's calculate the integral over C1. We visually, it looks like it's going to be zero. The dot product between F and DR is going to be zero because those vectors are orthogonal to each other. But let's go ahead and calculate it. Parameterize the path from 0, 0 to 5, 0 along the x axis. We did it in a previous video. We said we should just let x equal t. And for sure, y is equal to 0. Along the x-axis, whatever t, whatever x does is what t does. x goes from the 0 to 5, so t should go from 0 to 5. We throw these into a vector, t comma 0. That's our path vector. We take its derivative, which is 1 comma 0 with the dt. Third step, we rewrite the path. Um, I'm sorry, we rewrite the function to only be concerned about what happens above the path. And so for C1, we replace all the x's with t, replace all the y's with 0 in our vector field f, who is, I don't know if you can see this in magenta there, yx. Whatever's times dx is the i component, whatever's times dy is the j component. And so in rewriting that, instead of saying yx, we say 0t. Zero for because that's the parameterization. Y is equal to zero, and uh, x is equal to t. In steps two and three, we've calculated these two vectors. In step four, we take their dot product. But look at this dot product: one times zero, zero times t. It's gonna zero out. So when it's time to integrate in step five, we're integrating zero all day long. That's a zero. So, the line integral over C1 is equal to 0. We now have to co calculate the line integral over C2. Uh, yes, let's do it. All right, so you have, uh, there's a visual again. And now this new calculation is the upward path, the vertical path. And we have our C1 and our C2. We're going to go calculate the line integral over C2. We've already calculated the line integral over C1. How do you parameterize that path? Well, that's a vertical line. X is stuck on a constant, in this case, 5. Let Y be equal to T. Whatever Y does is what T does. Y starts at 0 and ends at 5, so T should start at 0 and end at 5. One option. You don't have to parameterize this way. Parameterizations are not unique. This is the standard parameterization. You don't have to follow it. Okay. What's nice when you have these constants, when you go take the derivative, you get zero. And so step two, take the derivative of the path. The derivative of five is zero. Derivative of t is one. 
Well, they both are with a DT on it. So we factor that DT out. Third step, rewrite F. So you're only concerned about what's above the path. So C2, it's called. Replacing the Y with a T. Replacing the X with a 5. It's the vector T comma 5. And we do the dot product in step 4. 0 times T. 1 times 5. It's 5. DT. So we integrate. From T equals A to T equals B. 5 DT. Let's get 25. All right, great. So the integral over C1 was 0, and the integral over C2 is 25, grand total 25. All right, wonderful. Now let's look at the same vector field, same starting and ending points to our curve, but a different path. Let's look at straight line segment from the starting point of C1 to the ending point of C2. Okay, let's call that C3. All right, what are we gonna do? We're going to parameterize this path. But it looks like you're going along the line y equals x. So if that's the case, then you know what to do. If you have y is equal to f of x, let x be t, and then y will be that formula on t. So it turns out that x is t and y is t. What does x do or y? They go from 0 to 5, so t should also go from 0 to 5. So you did it. That's your parameterization. One parameterization. That's all you need. All right, step two. We take a derivative of this path. It's 1, 1. Step three. In your function, your vector function f, remember it's the same f from before, y and x. How do you look at it and know what the f is? Whoever's times dx is what is the, uh, uh, the, the i component. Whoever's times dy is the j component. Okay, if there was a third component, it would be whoever's times dz. All right, great. And so we replace our y's with t, we replace our x's with t, and we dot these in step four. We get t plus t. We get 2t dt. That's what we integrate from 0 to 5. Well, antiderivative of 2t is t squared. So we get the same 25. Hmm. So c1 together with c2 gave you 25. c3, straight line path, gives you 25. Let's see if we have time for one more. Let's do the parabola path. Call it C4, where we go along the path y equals one-fifth of x squared. Okay. Same starting point, same ending point, 0, 0 to 5, 5. And something very strange happens. Um, when you know the path, it makes it easy to parameterize it if you know the function y equals f of x. And so um, in step one, when we go to parameterize the path, it's uh, y equals t, x equals t, and y is one-fifth of t squared. The formula that, uh, that you had for y of x, y is a function of x, now becomes that same function with x being equal to t, so y is a function of t. So t and one-fifth of t to the t squared. Step two, take the derivative, one and two-fifths of t. That's half of your dot product. Remember to put the dt on the end. Go back to the path. Replace the y's with 1 t squared. Replace the t x's with t's. Dot product in step four. You'll get 1 t squared and 2 t squared. Grand total of 3 t squared. That's what you integrate from zero to five. Okay, so we end up with uh, t cubed over 3 with that 3 canceled with the 3 who was in the numerator there. And you're putting a 5 in. You're getting 25 again. Three different paths. 
and 25 for each path. All right. Let's go ahead and cut this video here. We're going to see what's going on behind the scenes. This, why are we getting the same value every time? My name is Nakai Rimmer. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Please comment down below and like and subscribe. Um, and make your way to my webpage if you need some resources, extra resources to help you through this. All right. See you in the next video.